If you're anything like me, you've probably tried to make some kind of product animation in Blender that looks like this, but you've crashed and burned. Badly. Product animations are a tough thing to do because you have to combine hard surface modeling, photorealistic materials, and patience into one project. Luckily, I've been doing Blender for a while, and I think, well I hope, I've picked up some stuff here and there. So today I want to pass my knowledge on to you through this water bottle. You'll learn how to model it, give it vibrant materials, and even animate and render it. Let's dive in. To begin our journey, let's make the body of the water bottle. Of course, say goodbye to the default cube, and in its place add a cylinder, and scale it along the z-axis. Here, head over to this tab and change length to centimeters so you can make your cylinder in a real world scale. No normal water bottle is 2 meters tall. Next, hit Ctrl and 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier with a level of 3. Because the geometry looks weird, you can hit I and inset the top face to give it more of a flat appearance. With the subdivision surface modifier, any edges that are close together create a ridge or a pinch in the object, and that's what we've been doing to the top. Now to create the shape of the bottle, add a loop cut with Ctrl R in the middle, move it up and scale it down. Add one near the bottom and scale that up and now your bottle will have a less simple appearance. I had an actual bottle in real life which I used as reference and it had this little indent at the bottom so I just made another loop cut, beveled it, and in face mode right clicked it and extruded the faces along the normals. With a few more loop cuts where you see fit, the body of the bottle should be finished. With the cap, our next obstacle will make another cylinder and scale it until it doesn't look like a whole nother bottle. Make it a little bit wider than the body, and as a quick side note, if you see me suddenly going into side views, while panning you can just hold the alt key, and I think option as well for Apple users, and it will snap to where you're facing. It's really handy for projects like this. Next, here it may seem like I'm deleting the cap's top, but if you hit Ctrl F, you'll get a variety of options to fill the top with, and I chose grid fill. For those topology nerds out there, this gives the top of objects like cylinders geometry with quads, instead of just a single face with a lot of edges, which creates good edge flow and all that good stuff. As you can see, select the edges over here and scale them along the Y, or in your case, maybe the X axis. You can do this by hitting S and as you're scaling, hitting Y or X to move along those axes. This is so you can create the place the water travels through. If you want, you can do what I did and select the outer ring of edges by holding Alt or Option and clicking them, moving them up, and scaling them out. Even with only showing the important parts, this would still be a long video if I explained everything I did. But by all means, let me know in the comments if you'd like a tutorial on how to make the cap the way I did, or any hard surface modeling tutorial. For now, I'll just speed it up. But going back to the part the water comes through, what is that called by the way? Select those two faces and hit E to extrude them down, but barely by anything. Next, extrude them again as far as you want. Because we did two extrusions, we kept the outer edges close together and kept them sharp. And this is personal preference, but you can go into x-ray mode, select the outer edges with alt so you can select all of them, and turn up the edge crease over here, which is another way of sharpening edges. If you just made loop cuts all the time to sharpen edges, your model would quickly get chaotic, and it would be hard to change. Here you can see me adding more details, and you can too if you want. For example, I added this little switch thing that was on my reference. Also on my reference was this button that opened or closed the water flow, which I added by duplicating faces on my cap with shift to D, and separating them from the object by choosing selection after hitting P. You can resize it like I did, but once you have a shape you like, select every face, inset them, extrude them back, inset them again, and extrude them out. I made some loop cuts to sharpen the edges and got the main shape for my cap. To merge the button to the cap without being destructive, use the shrink wrap modifier. First, select the vertices you want to be stuck to the cap, head down to this tab and hit the plus to create a new vertex group, and with those vertices hit assign. Then all you have to do is select your cap under the target for the shrink wrap modifier and your cap is done. Again, I added some extra details which you can do if you want. Now it's time for materials and shading. Turn on cycles and GPU compute and head into the rendered view, or material preview if you have a slower computer. As you can see, my bottle is already blue and that's because in another attempt at modeling it, the cap failed really badly. So I deleted it and kept the body which I'd already assigned a material to. For that, I turned up the metallic value and turned down the roughness value which we'll get to soon. Here I make a loop cut around the middle of the cap and select those top faces. Hit Shift D to duplicate them and P to separate them like we did before. Select your new object and extrude all of the faces along their normals. If you didn't know, a normal in 3D is the direction a face is facing because they actually have a front and a back. But with the extrusion, don't overdo it because you want it to look subtle. Finally, your water bottle model should be finished. Give yourself a pat on the back. And now for the next part, lighting. Delete the default light and make a ground plane. Next, make an area light, rotate it, and move it to the side. In my scene, I made another one and moved it to the other side to get rid of harsh shadows, but feel free to do whatever lighting you want. I also added a black body node, which gives the lights temperature. If you want, watch my video on photorealism to find out more about that. 
Compared to modeling, lighting is a breeze, so let's get on to the fun part, materials. You can give your rim object and your cap a black material. Here it already has a black material because of other reasons, but nothing changes. I also turned down the roughness and turned up the metallic values on those to make them look metal. In my scene, I made the actual button a different metal, but you don't need to do that if you don't want to. Once you give the body a colored material, you're almost done. I also downloaded a surface imperfection to put on every part. In 3D, a surface imperfection is a black and white image that gets translated onto the roughness of your object. Where the image is white, the object becomes rougher, and where the image is dark, the object becomes less rough. I got some scratches to put on every material because I thought it looked more realistic. If you're going for a more polished look, though, I'd advise not using them because they are, after all, imperfections. If your images look strange, tab into edit mode and select every face, and then hit U and select the cube projection to unwrap your object. For the last part of the materials, I added a gradient texture on the material for the body. Then I added a mapping node and a texture and a coordinate node. I connected them like this to rotate the gradient so it would go up and down. Finally, I added a color ramp in between the gradient and the shader to change the colors. Here's the finished note setup if you want to see the specifics. And after everything you've done, you should have a water bottle. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and while you're down there, consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you want another tutorial on how to animate this bottle and turn it into an actual video, leave that in the comments and I'll see if I can do that. See you next time.